In today's video, we're taking a drive down historic Route 66 in Needles, California. If you are traveling Route 66 from east to west, Needles is the first town that you reach in California. In this video, however, we are making the drive from west to east, point A to point B on the map. After exiting Interstate 40 onto Route 66, one of the first things you'll come across is the Wagon Wheel Restaurant. There's been a restaurant at this location since the 1950s, but the Wagon Wheel has been here since 1978. Route 66 in Needles, like a lot of other towns, was largely bypassed when the interstate was built. Since this section was right off the interstate, we found a lot of chain motels and gas stations, but we also found something pretty unexpected that was really cool. We had no idea this old restored Texaco station was here before we began our trip, and it was really neat to get out and take a look around it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a lot of information on the station, so if anybody knows anything about it, the history, who's restoring it, if it's ever open, uh, please let me know in the comments. I would love to go back there and take another look at it in the future. I should also note, aside from being a Route 66 town, Needles is more than anything a train town. And during our visit, there was almost always a train going through the town. As we move further from the interstate, the road begins to look more like the Route 66 we're used to. You start to see a lot more mom and pop motels and a lot more classic signage. We did stop to take a look at the neon sign for the Sage Motel, which has been abandoned for a couple decades. Almost immediately after the Sage Motel, Route 66 begins to parallel Interstate 40. There's not a lot to see on this portion of Route 66. I also want to note, if it looks like I'm just speeding through town, rest assured I'm not. I've just sped up the driving footage in places where there's not a whole lot to see. I didn't get a chance to stop and take a look at these, but on the right side, note the garages going into the side of the hill. Now we are approaching downtown Needles, which has a few things to see, so it's a good place to park your car, get out, and walk around. The downtown area is not very big, so everything is pretty close together. Here is the old Needles Theater in the Sonic Temple. It was built in 1929, with a movie theater on the first floor and a Masonic Temple on the second floor. Unfortunately, it was damaged by fire in the early 1990s and has been closed since. Like a lot of places on the Mother Road, you can find quite a few murals throughout town. Here's one depicting a few of the Peanuts characters. Charles Schultz lived in Needles from 1928 to 1930, and the character of Spike is inspired by his time there. Next was El Garces, the train station and former Harvey House that is on the National Register of Historic Places. In front of the building is a palm-lined park with some of the trees dating back over a hundred years. The park also featured this cannon, which is a World War I monument. There is a plaque in the front that says it is dedicated by the citizens of Needles to all those who gave their life in the World War. But the main attraction here is the El Garces itself. Built in 1908 after the previous station burned down in 1906, it was designed to suggest a Greek temple. Harvey houses were known for their service and often had the nicest dining facilities in town. At El Garces, the lunchroom had two horseshoe-shaped counters and could serve 140 people. According to the Harvey girls, who traveled the country to work for the company, El Garces was a crown jewel in the enterprise. 
With the decline of railroad travel after World War II, El Garces closed as a Harvey house in the fall of 1949. In 1988, the Santa Fe Railroad moved to another facility and closed the building completely. The building faced destruction until a local group formed in 1993 as the Friends of El Garces. The group petitioned the City of Needles to purchase the station and that effort succeeded in 1999. In 2002, the National Park Service recognized the building's significance and placed it on the National Register of Historic Places. The building still acts as a train station to this day as Amtrak stops there nightly. Across the street from El Garces was a Route 66 museum in this old Penny's building, which was unfortunately closed on our visit. Back on the road and on the right, the large Art Deco building you see is the Claypool & Company building, which was the home of Claypool's Hardware and opened in 1930 and closed in 2002. It was at one point the largest building in downtown Needles. Next is the famous Welcome to Needles Wagon, which was originally part of the now defunct El Rancho Motel. If you would have visited Needles in the 1950s, the wagon would have been painted white and used to say El Rancho Needles, cooled by refrigeration, swimming pool, room phones. And like much of the town, it's a great place to see a train. Also next to the wagon is this cool 1923 Daughters of the American Revolution National Old Trails plaque. Back on the road and driving alongside the train, we'll be making one last stop on Route 66 in Needles. The 66 Motel was a six-room motel that was established in 1946 and was in operation until the 1990s. It now serves as private residences, so I didn't want to get too close not to invade anyone's privacy, but I did take a little bit closer look at it. Immediately next to the 66 Motel is Cardi's Camp, which opened in 1923 as Bill Cardi and Dick Mansker's campground and service station. You can actually see the sign for Cardi's Camp in the 1940 film, The Grapes of Wrath. Camp offered things like cabins for those early travelers to sleep, groceries, gas, and they even had a cafe. And of course, it's another great place in Needles if you want to watch the trains go by. And that's the end of our look at Route 66 in Needles, California. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.